for finding and recruiting drivers, strategies at work. My name is Kent Ferguson, Director of Transportation Solutions for Higher Right, and I will be your moderator for today's webinar session. This presentation was prepared for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be substituted for legal advice. Should you have any legal questions, please direct them to your legal counsel. Before we begin, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. We will not be providing copies of today's slides. However, we will send you an email tomorrow with a link to the recorded webinar session that you can share with your team. If you are experiencing any audio or visual issues, please refresh the browser window by clicking F as in Frank, 5, on your keyboard, or let us know through the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Please tweet using hashtag HireRightWebinar during the live webinar session. The most engaged Twitter participant will receive an exclusive thank you package from HireRight. We will take questions at the conclusion of the webinar. To type your question, click the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen. We will try to answer these during the webinar, but if a more complete answer is needed, or if we run out of time, the question will be answered later via email. After the presentation, we would appreciate getting your feedback. So please take our short survey. Let us know if this session was valuable and if you have any ideas for future topics. Now to our guest speakers. Our guest speakers for today's session are Kelly Anderson, President, Impact Solutions, and Matt Lee, Vice President of Business Development with Ramsey Media Works. Kelly has worked in the transportation industry for the past 27 years. Position he's, positions he has held include federal law enforcement officer, professional driver, driver trainer, driver recruiter, safety supervisor, and safety manager for a recruiting department of more than 1,700 truck fleets. Using these experiences, Kelly founded Impact in January of 1998. He is the chairman of the American Trucking Association Driver Recruitment, Driver Retention, and Driver Wellness Committee. He is an adjunct instructor for two colleges. He is on the board of directors for the Missouri Trucking Association. Matt Lee is the Vice President of Business Development for Ramsey Media Works and serves on several committees with the ATA Safety Management Council. He has worked in the marketing and advertising field for the past 20 years, holding positions of Senior Account Manager, President, Owner, and Vice President. Matt manages advertising campaigns for around 20 carriers across the U.S. and Canada and has been a presenter for the Master Recruiting Techniques course for the past two years. Welcome, gentlemen, and I'll turn it over to Kelly. Kelly, it's yours. Hey, Kent, thank you very much. I certainly don't take lightly the opportunity to uh, speak to your higher right audience today. And later on when we're updating my, uh, my bio, we need to add the part where I carry Matt's bags through airports. You can put that piece in there. So <laughs> Matt and I travel a lot together, and I don't take that lightly either. Matt, thanks for being a part of this with me. Folks, I just, um, in getting going, you know, we really wanted to give you something in this, in this webinar, as in everything we do, that you can take out of this meeting and use right away. And so we're going to start with talking about recruiting management, uh, some recruiting department structure that really makes a difference. And uh, secondly, then Matt's going to talk about where to find drivers, and then I'm going to talk about, uh, Matt and I, frankly, are going to talk about some recruiting techniques. And the very first thing when I talk about recruiting management um, is when I go to a company and the company wants to recruit owner-operators, company drivers, and student drivers, or any vari variation therein, if you are large enough where you have multiple recruiters, 
What I find happens a lot is basically they say, hey, when the phone answers, when the phone rings, answer it, recruit whoever's on there. And when that happens, like especially when I have students in the mix, students, company drivers, other operators, when that happens, you'll find that you have tons of student applicants, you know, a few company driver uh, hires, and no owner operator hires. But every time I look at that, I, I ask the, 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 the recruiting director, how many students do you want? If you could have the perfect mix, what would that mix look like? And so, well, we want this many students, and we want, you know, this many company drivers and this many owner operators. So then, um, we, you know, I say create primary and secondary recruiting responsibilities. So you, know, you have these two recruiters that focus, their primary focus is on company driver recruiting. Then you just need one student recruiter, and that, that person's going to give you 10 drivers a week. You know? So you just need the, the one student recruiter. And for an owner-operator recruiter, you only want three owner-operators a week, then, then have one owner-operator recruiter. And whenever we – but here's the deal. So, so when the phone rings, that's their primary, primary responsibility. But if the owner-operator recruiter is on the phone, well, then one of the company driver recruiters backs them up. And if the student recruiter's on the phone, then maybe the owner operator recruiter backs them up. And so you have the primary and secondary, but what happens is people take pride in ownership. And what you'll see happens is every one of your groups will come up evenly where you need them to be. I've done that so many times. And now some of you are small, and you know what? You want different types of recruit, uh, of applicants and recruits. And so then you're just going to answer the phone when it comes. But if you have the opportunity to add us another person, do the primary and secondary recruiting um, responsibilities, and you will see a difference. Next, remove distractions that take recruiters away from recruiting. Folks, you know, if you're getting emails from industry leads this, this week, you're seeing all sorts of things. You're saying the driver shortage is the number one concern for trucking companies, and it's only going to get worse. And so when you have recruiters, and frankly, this is true with any sales job, if, if, if there is something that will take the recruiter, that bar salesperson, away from selling, it will. It's so much more fun to, to build packets for orientation than to answer recruiting calls. It's just, it just, we just see that happen over and over again. So remove distractions that take the recruiters away from recruiting. Uh, I see a lot of times the recruiter is the person that teaches orientation, especially on small fleets. We've got to find another solution because while they're teaching an orientation, they're not catching the phone calls from applicants and not replying to the applicants in a timely manner. And we'll talk about that moving forward. And if that happens, you've got empty trucks. And I think we've all got it. I think we all agree the most important thing for us to do is get those trucks on the road. And so let's focus on what's important and not, and, and not spend our time on the things that are less important. And let's not spend our time on things that, that frankly, don't give us the biggest return for, for our investment. You know, the next piece is to every morning, every morning to. And I hope, um, uh, Matt, if you're live, it says the sound keeps going in and out. Is that me, or is or, are we okay? Is this maybe that person? I, I think it sounds fine to me, Kelly. Okay, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, so every morning, I, I highly recommend that you have a five-minute stand-up morning meeting with your staff. And in, in that meeting, you have, you have your, your recruiters. If you have multiple recruiters, it's, it's hey, you know, I've got this many uh, on the board, this many more possible. And each one of them say that. And then you, at the end, you would say, all right, listen, we've got um, this many drivers in, the, in orientation this week. We've got this many empty trucks. We're going to net this many empty trucks when we're done. And for next week, we've got this many scheduled already and this many more possible. Just, and then also any, any um, company news. And also, what is our turnover a goal. What's our driver retention goal? And and I would talk about it in terms of how many drivers we've lost. You know, we know to be where we want to be, we can't lose more than 
two drivers a week or five drivers a week. It depends on the size of, of the company. We have people on this call that is, um, you know, from every different size of fleet. So, um, you guys, I'm trying to, trying to cover the gambit here. But, you know, even, even if you're a small company and, and there's just, uh, you know, you as the recruiter and you're it, and, and then you have a safety person as well, you know, I tell small companies, you ought, you ought to all get together, get to operations together, safety, recruiting. Let's just every day have a real quick download of the key performance indicators. Uh, it helps keep focus and lets us know, you know that, we're hitting, we're, that we're heading toward the right target. And I'm just going to tell you, a common denominator of every fleet that I, that I talk with that has super high turnover rate and super high number of empty trucks is nobody knows the number. And I actually have, you know, the story wherein I used to do this meeting with my recruiters, and the day that I, that I left, the new manager quit doing that meeting. Six months later, I called in, and my, one of my recruiters said, hey, I went and got the number, and it is this. And, and the, um, I was shocked at the number of empty trucks and the turnover rate. And my recruiter said, man, Kelly, we haven't had a meeting since you left. We don't know what the number is. And it doesn't seem like anybody cares. Folks, if your staff doesn't think you care, you've, you've shot in the foot. <laughs> you know? uh, then why should they care if they don't think that you care? It is absolutely critical that everybody understands what those key performance indicator numbers are so that we can, um, so that we can address it. And I'm seeing a lot of message uh, of information about the sound quality being poor. And I'm sorry for that, folks. And I know that Sharon is probably working in the background to try to figure out what's going on. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, I'm on a headset. I'm going to turn off my headset and see if I can help on this end. Okay, I'm on my handheld device. So hopefully if it was my headset, I can help on this end a little bit with that issue. If somebody maybe send a message in and let me know if that helped. But uh, the other thing that I, that I would uh, share with you from a management standpoint, folks, this just absolutely, I, I just felt kicked in the shin and felt totally stupid. Oh, somebody said much better. Thank you, Phyllis. Um, I felt totally stupid uh, when this happened. We had a, a situation where when we hired new recruiters, we had a training schedule for them. And so we'd send them around to the different departments, send them orientation, send them through safety, send them through operations, and all this stuff. And one thing about it is when we um, when we came uh, when they came back, they would tell us about things that other departments were saying and or doing. And by the way, um, we found out that some people had changed policies and procedures and hadn't told us about it. So that was one way we found out the latest, greatest information. But here is when I absolutely just sat back in my chair and said, how in the world did I miss this? I started sending my current recruiters through the process. And I had a couple of current recruiters that had been with me for a while come back and say, you know, Kelly, wow. Now I understand how we fit in this company. So how in the world did I miss that? I mean, these are recruiters that had been with me for years. I mean, they're coming to work every day and they're recruiting drivers to be on our fleet and they don't understand how our department fits within the, within the company. Shame on me. And what a difference it makes made when they got the grip on that. Now they knew they understood. And when you think about the book, Gung Ho, and, it's, and the very first principle, and guys, a recommendation from Kelly, read Gung Ho. Um, it, the very first principle is worthwhile work. In the spirit of the squirrel, worthwhile work. And once they understood how they fit into the, into the picture and into the company, they understood that what we did was worthwhile. So please don't miss that, that point. It is critically important. And with that, Matt, I've got to pass it off to you and, and talk to us about fishing for drivers. Well, thank you, Kelly. Um, you know, I, I do love to fish, so I always try to use this analogy as, as often as possible. Um, and, and it is. It's a lot like uh, a fishing. You know, today we, uh, 
we do have uh, the greatest shortage that, that we have faced as an industry. And I read some documents uh, again uh, this week that said that we uh, are now anticipating to be about 50,000 drivers uh, short by the end of uh, this year. And so it just continues uh, to be a struggle, uh, you know, to find drivers and, and to find good qualified drivers, safe drivers out there. And so I know, uh, Kelly, that you serve as the president of uh, the uh, ATA Safety Management Recruiting Retention and Wellness Committee. And uh, I know that there are some great things that are going on um, in the uh, in that particular realm, uh, you know, to make to make strides, to make changes, and to uh, do better job of educating these younger folks that trucking is a uh, is a great profession and uh, something that that everybody can uh, uh, be a part of to help us come out of this shortage. So anyway, I uh, with that said, you know, people ask me all the time where uh, where and what sources. Uh, are you seeing work, you know, on a, you know, on an overall basis? What, what is it? What is that, what is that source? And unfortunately, uh, in today's environment, it's, it's extremely uh, competitive out there. There's a lot of noise uh, in the transportation world. And so we have to be uh, very targeted with our message. And so unfortunately, there, there's not a silver bullet. Uh, I wish that there was, but there's just not. And so um, we, uh, we, we have to have an advertising mix, uh, a program that, uh, that, we, that we need to, to build uh, to be able to, uh, to find those drivers and be able to report and track uh, and, and monitor our results uh, is also very important, especially when it's uh, on the mix, uh, in, in the mix. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to have a, a chance today on this particular call to talk about all the things that are available out there. There are thousands of, of advertising opportunities to, to talk to drivers. Um, and But with our limited time today, I just wanted to share uh, three of the top sources that, that I see as far as um, working in multiple areas. Um, you know, today... Uh, we, we really try to geo-target uh, for drivers. And so um, this, these three, in, in no particular order, honestly, uh, is, is what I am seeing today work across uh, several different platforms and several different, uh, in several different areas. So I kind of wanted to briefly touch on these three. Uh, the first one is social media and uh, Facebook in particular. It's just kind of a hot button right now. Um, I am seeing a, a lot of uh, interaction from drivers. I think the latest statistic says that it's 96% of company drivers are, are now on social media. Uh, and so it's a great platform for us to use to talk to drivers. But the, the issue that I see with a lot of carriers is that they don't have the personnel um, devoted to, to make it to make it a success, you have to devote someone um, to that specific program so that they are uh, constantly out there um, putting messages, putting fresh messages out there, good content. It takes a little bit of time to think about you know what you're going to post for the month, um, and don't overwhelm them with job opportunities. You know, I see a lot of carriers just just mass post. You know, we've got this job, we've got this job, we've got this job. Well, I think that we forget to tell people why they should come to work for us and, and what makes us a good company versus, uh, you know, everybody else that's out there saying that they are number one. And so social media is, uh, is, is, a, uh, is a huge tool. And, and I, uh, last uh, this month, actually, on the uh, Recruiter Insider call, uh, I talked about three things that you need to be doing with social media, and one is you you have to listen. You know, I think too many times we're out there just jabbering. Um, we're posting stuff just to be posting things, and we don't actually listen. Um, you know, I think there's a lot to be gained if we just stop and listen. Maybe there are some things that um, that they're saying 
that it would be an easy fix and maybe that maybe that adds to the quality of the life of your current drivers so just listen um, attend to those messages make sure that you're answering those messages um, and then act uh, act upon those messages and I know we can't do that all the time but the ones that we can the ones that are easy to fix let's fix them uh, and be able to act on that and the um, the another way to use social media is through ads um, where you're buying uh, boosted posts through ads or um, actually lead forms we have a program we call social edge but it's it's through Facebook and and now you can actually do this uh, some of the way through Facebook and it's a it basically ask them to fill out a lead form so that you can actually get that qualified lead before they ever or without them even leaving Facebook uh, so it's a uh, it, Facebook is definitely a uh, a pretty strong source for us right now um, the second thing um, and actually I'll, I'll show you an example this is an example of the uh, the lead form that I'm talking so we actually asked them for their name their email address their phone number some very very short information so that we as recruiters then can get them called back so that's that's an example there of what I'm talking about on the lead form so the second thing would be Google and there's several ways to be able to use Google today um, you can uh, you can actually do the traditional search ads which looks something similar to this now the top three or four um, in the um, uh, search tools or search bar if you will the top three or bottom bottom three uh, are going to be paid ads and they'll actually say ads um, on the uh, on the post itself that's one way to use Google um, the other way would be <clears throat> to um, use remarketing banners so or remarketing ads and I like to use this example you know you go to Lowe's and you're looking at an eight-foot fiberglass ladder and uh, you know two days two weeks two months later you're on weather.com and you see that ad for that eight foot fiberglass ladder and you're like how did they know that's a remarketing banner uh, and more and more companies are using those and so as drivers are coming into your landing pages then we're able to uh, target those specific drivers um, that didn't take action for whatever reason we're able to go back out and continue to push messages to them and give them reasons why they should come to work uh, for your company the third thing <clears throat> is aggregators and everybody knows what an aggregator is it's your indeed your jobs your careers link up um, you know these sites unfortunately are only as good as your as your landing page um, because a lot of times what you'll end up doing is you'll buy sponsored links from these particular companies and they're going to drive them back it's just going to be a direct link back to the um, to the actual um, landing page and so we have to make sure that we have those foundations put into place uh, first and so actually I want to talk about that right now uh, and what we need to to have in place to to be able to go out there and uh, to fish for these drivers uh, and to be able to, to bring them in uh, and intrigue them and, and invite them to come to work for your company um, one is Facebook obviously you're going to need a page um, and you're going to need someone to to monitor that uh, I've kind of talked about that a little bit earlier uh, definitely going to need to put someone in charge and someone in place to be able to uh, to do that the other thing is a landing page a landing page is extremely critical today um, drivers are doing more research I think studies show that they visit a, an average of 16 sources before they make a decision and so we have to make sure that we're putting proper information out there good information um, reasons why they should come to work for you um, driver testimonials if possible are, are, are a huge tool today um, because it's it's just better coming from the driver than it is coming from the recruiter um, you know let them talk about some of the experiences that they have seen working for this company as a driver so testimonials are a good thing but landing pages uh, really serve 
the purpose of making sure that we are uh, allowing the driver the opportunity to do their own research and then when interested give them the the way that they want to communicate with you so what i mean by that is we we when we build landing pages today you need to make sure that you have these pieces in the puzzle one you got to have a very very easy one touch dial phone call uh, phone number and unfortunately today and i don't know if it's the new laws the cell phone use laws or or what um, but call volumes you know are just not what they used to be today more companies are creating policies that <clears throat> that uh, restrict drivers from being able to make calls while they're out on the road um, so we have to be able to give them the opportunity to fill out a short form on the landing page uh, when they can't make that phone call and so we're actually asking for their phone number their email address do you have a current CDL that make it very 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 short and concise something that they can fill out from their cell phone in a matter of minutes uh, and uh, and then they hit submit that comes to you and then you're able to follow up with that lead uh, and then the other one of course is just the full app make it simple make it easy to understand how you get in there and you actually <clears throat> fill out the full application but I will tell you that the majority of the way drivers communicate today are through the, the lead form or short apps. So once we have the, all of those things in place, the, the advertising mix that we have out there, as well as the landing page and the Facebook program, then it's time to actually start using some of our offline channels. Um, and what I mean by that is referral campaigns and rehires. Now Kelly's gonna talk about rehires here in a minute, um, but referral campaigns, I'm really, really seeing some great results with that. But you really have to give them the tools, the drivers, <laughs> excuse me, your drivers, the tools to be able to succeed. And so there are there are things out there today. I know some of you give out cards, things like that. But then we actually re, re, we rely on that referral to call us. I just think that's backward. I think that we should actually be proactive in calling our referrals. And so uh, the card's there on the right-hand side. It's a perforated card. It's a very simple. They're extremely inexpensive to get printed. Um, it's a way for your drivers to put this referrals information in, on there. They tear the card in half. They give the copy of why you should come to work for your company to the referral. And then your driver keeps that piece so that they can give the information about that referral to your recruiting team so that we can actually follow up with them. And so the cards cards are great. Uh, the, um, the actual uh, uh, next step, it would be a digital app. Uh, you can see there on that phone example. And... Um, the uh i'm sorry i'm getting some some feedback here says i need to talk a little bit louder so i will do that um the actual uh app there in the middle that works very similar to the cards but your drivers actually have an act have access to that to fill that out immediately so they put in their information then they put in the referrals information and then they hit submit and so it goes directly to your recruiters immediately so that you can start following up with them. And then the third thing that I have in there is a poster. Um, if we're not constantly reminding our drivers about our referral program and asking them to participate in the program, <clears throat> then they will forget. And so the posters are great to hang up in driver's lounges. Uh, anywhere where we're going to have drivers around uh, is just a great idea to be able to put, uh, put those out there in front of them. And so uh, I said a minute ago that Kelly was going to talk about uh, rehire letters. I know he has uh, some some examples that, that he sends out, uh, but I'm going to let him uh, talk about that. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Kelly. Hey, Matt, I appreciate it. And hey, before I talk about rehires, we had a question that came in. It says, we recruit for temp drivers mostly one day or a few days, uh, but we are having no success. We post 
and go to job fairs and post flyers, but still nothing, any ideas. And really, Matt, I think if uh, if he's listened to what you had to say here, uh, he may have got his answer to that question. Because my opinion is when you're putting flyers up, you, you're, you just have such a small group of people that might see that. And the same as, uh, as the job fairs. You're just limited to the people that are there at the job fair. And if they have an online presence, especially uh, remarketing, um, you know, that's the pointed tip of the spear. It puts their ad right in front of a, of a driver that's looking for their type of job right now. Would you agree with that? And would you add anything to it? Yes, absolutely. You know, I, I would just definitely, I would go back to make sure that you have those foundation pieces in place. Because we can buy the greatest ads and we can buy the, the have the, the things out there in the, in the best places. But when the drivers are going and doing research about why I should come to work for you, and we're not doing a good job of telling that story, um, going back to the landing page and giving them the way to communicate that they want to communicate with you, then they're going on and they're going to they're gonna move on to, to another carrier. So I would definitely make sure that all of your foundation pieces are, are in place and solid. And when Matt mentions a foundation, that landing page is critical. If you know the number one place drivers go to find a job today is the internet and you have to have a place to send them on the internet and that landing page is the place. And do not omit the short form. As Matt said, that's the number one response that we get. And we've had fleet oh, to take that off and the response just plummets. Got to have the short form on there. Got to have the phone number and then the full loan application. And, you know, I want to add to the referral piece. Uh, many times companies want to have a referral campaign where, well, okay, we'll pay you a thousand bucks. And they spread it out over a year. You know, the truth is most drivers, when they do a referral, they don't have any other influence with that other driver. And so to spread it out over a year, and the truth is 75% of turnover happens in the first 90 days of employment. So now this person's referred a driver, and they're hoping they're going to get $1,000, and they might get 250 of it. So now we have created a negative feeling about our um, referral campaign. A couple campaigns that I've seen, or one I'd suggest at a minimum, just you know, look at your advertising cost per hire. There, there's an advertising cost per hire for every driver that's in your in your orientation, and you can come to that number by looking at what you spent in advertising and how many drivers that you that you hired. And there it is. Um, give that to the driver. Give that to the referring driver. It's 500 bucks. It's 750 bucks. Frankly, it's probably enough. Um, some fleets that are advertising cost per hire is totally out of whack because the recruiting process is out of whack. And so now we're talking 1500 to 2500 and above. Uh, I have seen a couple of extraordinary uh, referral compensations and uh, having a verbal disadvantage moment, Matt, on how to, how to say this. But anyway, uh, first off is one company paid two cents per mile to the referred referring driver for as long as both drivers were employed. That's probably the biggest I've ever seen. Two, per, two cents per mile for every mile that, um, uh, you know, the increase uh, as long as both drivers are, are employed. And a second, I just saw this one recently, 10 cents per mile for every mile the other driver runs for the first three months of employment. No limit. So, uh, and just uh, another one, uh, recently, if Fleet's paying like $2,750 uh, referral, uh, and everybody in the company is eligible for, for that referral bonus. So there's a couple of, of things out there. I don't suggest stretching it out. Um, make it something you're willing to give when the person's in an orientation so you don't build, um, you don't build anxiety and, and angst because I was expecting one thing and got another. Uh, rehires. So you heard me say a moment ago, 75% of turnover happens uh, in the first 90 days of employment. That being being known, that there's several ways we can use that statistic. You know, one is for drivers that we wanted to hire and disappeared. 
And so send them a letter 30 days later. Hey, John, I call that the two-color employment letter. Because they either went to work for somebody else or stayed where they were. And most recruiters, after they make a couple of phone calls, file the application. It's a wasted lead. I would send them a um, send them a letter in about 30 days that says, hey, you know, I lost contact with you. I hope you're okay. I just want you to know if it's not working out where you're at, give me a call because I'd still like to have you in impact truck where you belong. It removes the fear of rejection. It hits them in that window of 90 days when, when we know that statistically most turnover happens and you get them to come to you. Same with rehires. Instead of waiting for the rehire to call you back and say, hey, you know, I quit. I'd like to come back. If, if you're waiting until um, somebody calls you back, you end up with a low quality and a low quantity and a high turnover rate. On the other hand, if you purposefully, as soon as somebody quits, you're trying to talk them into staying, and then you vote on them staying, and 30 days later you send them out a letter that says, hey, you know, I'm sorry to hear you quit, but, you know, if, if it doesn't work out where you're at, you know, give me a call. A rehire review board has already voted yes for your return, and a um, simple telephone call could you could get you back in our truck and belong. And guys, you, they will call you back as anybody else. It just works. Every time I've done that, I've got a high quality, high quantity, and low turnover rate from from that group of drivers. So, um, and, and Matt, I see some questions up there. I'm not trying to read those as I'm as I'm speaking. So if you see something there, be ready to interject. I, just, I see something on landing page and referral up there. But uh, I want to thank Matt for putting the old Coast Guard boat up there. I, I am ex Coast Guard, and um, so when we talked about having a, a strategy for urgency, I can tell you when our uh, SAR alarm went off the station till McBay, we were underway within 90 seconds. Uh, because when people are dying and drowning, they don't have time for those lace up our boots. So uh, definitely an urgency. <laughs> so um, the the uh, when you think about having a sense of urgency and the 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 phone ringing and an applicant reaching out to you, you know we got to keep in mind we have an, have an have a have a mindset that drivers would rather be eating, sleeping, driving. Spending time with their family, or you know, playing sky crane for stuffed animals in the truck stop, rather than talking to recruiters. And if that's our mindset, then every time the phone rings, we need to give the driver every reason in the world to stop calling other uh, recruiters and go back to doing those five of the things. Because as long as they are uh, calling other recruiters, we stand a chance to lose that driver to somebody else. And we got to make that driver ours until such time as we decide, oh, man, uh, we don't want this one. And sometimes you know, you just don't want that person. So we're going to keep building on how, to, how do you do that. So my first thing is, you know, when I ask recruiters, you know, if, if a driver loses a job or if a person loses a job, and the truth is, the folks, let's think of ourselves. You know, if something happened this afternoon and you became unemployed, would you start making phone calls to look for a job, and the answer is yes. And what would make you stop making those phone calls looking for a job? And the answer is, well, I've got a reason because I've probably got a job on, on the line. And the same is true with driver applicants. They need to feed their family just like we do, and so we need to have that sense of urgency. And so next is the quality of driver. You know, some folks believe, well, you know what, we had a, hot, we had a bad hire one time. So I'm just going to tell you, we're going to get a full-blown application, and we're going to have a big old two or three interviews that we're going to do, and we're going to get everything figured out on this application. And by the way, you know, when we get all that figured out, we will know we've hired the absolute best applicants. Folks, I've got a couple of clients that that was their process. And mainly, they're not they're actually a manufacturing company that has a trucking division. And so they're bringing those human resource practices over into driver recruiting that they're trying to use in warehouse workers and office people. But by the way, they can't fill their office people or warehouse worker positions either because they're a broken down system. Um, people need to feed their family. <laughs> and the longer that it takes you to to give them a reason to not 
um, to not make any more phone calls, the lower the quality of driver you get to recruit. It's just counterintuitive. You think that longer it takes, you'd be more sure and have a better person. And the truth is, it'd be true if they if they didn't need money. So how do we combine wanting quality and wanting quantity? And the deal is, we fix our system to to speed up our qualification process. And if you want to do interviews, and, and rightfully so. Absolutely. And one thing that I've had to work with with warehouse managers and terminal managers that want to be involved in the in the interview process is hey, we're gonna hot transfer this applicant to you right here from this live phone call that I'm having that they're pre qualified and they're interested. We're gonna do a hot transfer for you to set up your face to face interview and for them to finish their application and this is all gonna to happen tomorrow. <laughs> you know, not two weeks from now. So the longer it takes you to, to to give them a reason not to make another phone call and, and, and to give them an answer that, hey, based on what I'm seeing here, I don't see any reason we can't take this to the next level, the longer it takes you, the lower down that pyramid you get to go. So how, you know, how do we instill a sense of urgency and shorten the qualification cycle? First off, we've got to know that you know, we've got to answer the calls and answer the online leads. Uh, Matt, you did a study on that and you found, can you share that statistic that you found on speed of answer and the chance to hire? <clears throat> well, there, uh, there are statistics, there's been research uh, uh, conducted that uh, based on the, the short form and the follow-up. And so uh, what it says is, is that if we have a way and a system to follow up with those short forms, those lead forms, uh, inquiries, whatever you want to call them, uh, coming in from the landing page, if we follow up with those drivers within five minutes, we are 900% more likely to hire that candidate. So uh, it is it is critical to find a way and get a system to get follow, to follow up with drivers. Excellent. Hey, and uh, somebody asked the question about what, what type of time frame from the moment of contact to be in training. Folks, we can't control that. Uh, we can't control from hello until they're sitting in orientation because every applicant is different. And they want to take they want two weeks notice, they want to take a week's vacation, and then finally they'll show up in orientation. What we can control is setting a plan of action with them, and we can do that on the very first phone call. So you know, let's work on the things we can control. So, and, and sorry, I, some people say the sound is still coming in and out. I must have a bad um, a bad cell signal. Here, somebody is asking what exactly is a landing page. It's a micro internet site, and it's usually specifically related to recruiting. It's, it's one page uh, that we can send applicants to. Oh, Matt, I, I'm sorry, Matt, I see you answered that already. Oh, well, that's so, fine. You know, it's just def definitely want to make sure that it's driver specific. So, you know, you may have a corporate website right now. Uh, that's great, but this is for just drivers. So, we're going to give them. Reasons why you should come to work for us, um, the benefits, we're going to give uh, the requirements, maybe a hiring map, uh, testimonials if that's available. But it is, it's a micro site that's specifically geared toward drivers. Absolutely. And I got a question about the referral fee. It says, all right, so should we, should we uh, um, pay out the referral fee all at once even if the referred driver doesn't stick around? Well, if your referring driver has the ability to influence the referred driver and have that relationship, then maybe you want to tie in some, a retention, you know, stretch it out so, because they can influence the driver to stay. But with most trucking companies, um, the, referred, the referring driver doesn't really know the referred driver. They, they were talking on the dock, talking on the CB, sitting in a restaurant, whichever, and he said, man, you ought to call old Bill. You know, I work over here, and they treat me right. And so then, um, you know, they don't really know this person. And frankly, they're not going to know in their orientation, and they're never going to bump into them out on the road either. In that case, they did their job. They gave you a hot lead. You did your job. You talked to the driver, finished up, you know, making sure that he understood the job, the qualifications, and you got him in orientation. So pay the driver. He did his part. Um, he doesn't have any part in retention. That's the fleet manager in your part. So I see quite often that, that um, 
companies want to stretch that out. But the driver doesn't have any part in it. So, so anyway, to answer the call quickly, 900% more likely to, um, to, to recruit that driver if you answer within five minutes. Also, over half of applicants hang up if they catch voicemail and or a, um, an automated phone system. So have, you know, empty trucks is not a recruiting problem. It's a company problem. And so have the, the phone calls go through recruiting and go through your other managers and, and you know, have everybody in the company if you want. We had to go through all of the safety folks. And if you're a smaller company and there's three or four people in the company, then every one of you that that call ends up going to because we have got to get that truck on the road and we've got one shot to do it. Number number two, empower recruiters. I see so many times when recruiters are not allowed to make hiring decisions. Give recruiters the the clearly defined hiring criteria. So if the drivers are within these standards, they can set them up for orientation and start a plan of action. If the drivers are outside of those standards, how they don't even work it. With recruiters that aren't empowered. I see them working applications that they know don't qualify just to prove to the person that is going to turn that application down that they ought to turn their application down. And as a result, they're spending tons of money and time on leads that they know they can't work in the first place and do anything with. So if, they, if they're not empowered to make a decision, then they won't. And if they won't, then the driver's going to hang up the phone with no reason not to call somebody else. And I've seen, there's one person, I don't want to name them, but there's a safety director that has been fired from five different companies. And every company he goes to, he puts process in place where recruiting cannot, um, cannot authorize drivers to come to work you know, as part of this process, and they stack trucks against the fence and he gets fired. He needs to quit doing that and he'll quit stacking trucks against the fence. And I've told him personally because I know him really well. <laughs> So anyway, be, be the first to show acceptance. You know, a lot of recruiters are afraid of, um, of of rejection. And as a result, they just keep talking, 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 talking. You know, I do an undercover trucker deal you know, where I call in as a live driver to um, to get hired to go through orientation. And folks, most of the time, if I didn't try to get hired, I wouldn't. It's me that says, well, what do I got to do to get hired? Folks, we've got to be the first one to, to say and not be afraid to say, man, John, based on what I'm seeing here, I don't see any reason we can't take this next step. Matter of fact, sounds like you want to be here like on, on the 17th. So this is what we need to do to make that happen. And that's the action plan piece that we're about to, about to get into right here. So first off, I'm saying let's have a conversation, not an interrogation. Most recruiting calls, recruiters will go, you guy goes, are you hiring drivers? Yeah, sure are. Then they're silent. Well, what can you tell me about it? Then they interrogate them. Where you live? How much experience do you have? Do you have any criminal convictions, which they shouldn't, which they shouldn't ask on the phone call, thanks to Title Seven. And, you know, where do you live, experience, tickets, accents? Well, if everything you're telling me is true, then I've got, and then you just spray and pray everything they've got. And, well, if you're interested, go to our website and apply. That system doesn't work. Let's have a conversation. Hey, uh, who am I talking to? Oh, this is Matt. Hey, Matt, I appreciate you calling. Hey, by the way, uh, how do you hear about us? Because if we don't know how we're getting our leads, then we're wasting money. Then, well, Matt, tell me a little about yourself, where you've been working, what you've been doing. It starts a conversation. So I find out a little about his work history. I shift into safety, just getting enough information to get going. And in that conversation, I'm finding out what his symptoms are. I'm like a doctor. I don't start writing prescriptions until I know what the symptoms are. But once I know what the symptoms are, I can write an appropriate prescription, and the applicant goes, man, that sounds great, and I'm hearing buying signals. I'm focusing on what their problem is, and I'll also tell you that whenever I've been able to uh, you know, give appreciation, humor, or bring another expert into the phone call, I'm almost always guaranteed to hire that driver. And I'm talking to that or that applicant because I am talking to a person and appreciating a person. If they've been if they've done military service, tell them thank you. If they've had a hundred or a million a million miles accident free, appreciate that and recognize what a what a what a 
a, a job that was. And I am so sorry, Tammy. I got your message. I don't know what to do, but my phone we're just stuck with it, uh, with me going in and out. Um, I'll never do my, my webinars from here again. So um, the humor, you know, laugh with them. And then also uh, bring somebody else in. If you don't know the answer to a question, uh, then and get somebody on the phone that does know the answer to the question because they cannot make a decision to get on a plan of action with us if they have unanswered questions. So as I'm talking to the driver, I'm hearing he's interested because as I, as I give him prescriptions that meet his specific needs, he says, man, that sounds good. Oh, that works for me. Oh, that's better than I've got now. And so I'm hearing that he's, that he's interested. That makes it real easy for me to go, well, John, i got to tell you, based on what I'm seeing here, I don't see any reason that we can't take this to the next step. As a matter of fact, I'm going to need to get a full-blown application from you. And, I mean, can I send you a link to our app? Oh, yeah, sure. We'll get the email address and send the link. Okay, so here's what we need to do. And, folks, this is the magic. Here's what we need to do. So we're going to work toward you being here on the 17th. I need you to fill that application out. Can you get that done this evening? Oh, absolutely. And, okay, so you're going to fill that out this evening. I'll be keeping my eyes open for it, and I'll get started on it uh, when I get it. And I, why don't you call me? Please don't miss what I just said. You call me tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Most recruiters say, oh, yeah, fill our application out and we'll give you a call. Folks, for 19 years I've been calling fleets as an undercover trucker to get hired. And number one, if I didn't push myself to get hired, I didn't get hired. And number two, when I filled the application out, they only twice in 19 years have I been called. Hey, hey I'm not kicking you in the shin. If the truth is we are swamped. Our phone is, is, is ringing off the wall. Our Internet's coming at us. So what I say is you call me so that I'm loading my phone with people I need to talk to. That is a huge difference. And so I only have to call the people that don't call me. They have a reason to call me because we're working on a plan of action to be here on a specific orientation date. And the next piece, relieve anxiety and to improve the show rate to orientation, have the driver manager Call the driver this Thursday that's going to be in orientation on Monday and just to introduce themselves. How are you doing? My, I'm your driver manager. Do you have any questions? They always have questions, but it relieves that anxiety of, of you know, it, 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 am I going to like the fleet manager? Who is he? Who is she? You know, are we going to get along? So it really goes a long way toward that. Hey, so we are, we're six minutes out. Matt, I see some unanswered questions here. Let's see if we can grab some of those um, real quick. Uh, One of them, uh, you Archie, to go? Art, yeah, Ar Archie uh, actually asked if, if you could show uh, one through three again on these slides. No, no, slide, it's slide uh, 25. 20, okay, 25, go on, push yes. it. There it is. Okay. All right. Uh, you got another one, Matt? I haven't had a chance to look. Can you send a sample of a referral card? Um, yes, I can. I can. Um, if you will provide your email address, I'll send. I'll send you an email. Absolutely, and I know Sharon can probably help with that through Higher Right, and so we'll get with Sharon on that. And maybe uh, Matt, what we can do is send. And you know what else I'll do? I will send you an example rehire letter and took other employment letter. I want to send those to Sharon at Hire Right, and she can push those as, uh, when she pushes all of this out. Uh, as Sharon says they're not going to uh, send a copy of the slides, but they are going to send uh, the recording of this webinar. Somebody just asked about that. So let's look at something else. A referral card sample, I think you just answered that. Um, you're going to get a copy of the recording. We saw that. Why can't, we can't ask potential drivers about their previous criminal background? Yes, that's true. Uh, EEOC Title VII um, basically in a lot of states now are are ban the box, which you know, ban the box means you can't you can't ask on the application. You can't ask until a contingent offer of employment has been made. 
And so once you make a contingent offer, which they don't really quite define what that is, so it's up to you or your legal counsel to decide, then you can ask about the criminal conviction. But here's the other thing. Don't um, – you can't have a neutral policy related to criminal convictions. I mean, you can't have a policy that says um, no – no misdemeanors in five years or no felonies ever. Uh, I don't care what it was. You just can't have it. That will cost you a lot of money. Uh, you have to prove a business necessity, a connection between that job and that criminal conviction in order to turn somebody down um, for a for a criminal conviction. So, uh, and that's, a, that's an entire seminar on its own. And uh, uh, I write and I can talk about maybe doing one of those in the future. And I've got an attorney that loves to do those and he's fun to listen to as well. Um, I have a question here from we can... Go for it. Go ahead. I have yeah, a question no, here ahead. from Ryan. I have a question here from Ryan. He says, uh, any opinion on bulk or indirect apps? Uh, they lead to hires but take a lot of involvement from our recruiters as they work through the 95% that don't come on and often cause defeat. Um, you know, I think Amen. that there is a yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with that. I mean, we certainly uh, focus on direct leads, and that's one of the biggest questions if you're looking into a job board today. Um, a, you want to make sure that it's it's it has that uh, quality or that uh, qualified driver. What I mean by that is uh, there are sites that are that are um, directed toward owner operators. There are sites that are directed toward company drivers. Um, lease purchase, so you want to make sure that you're that you're even looking at the right site. But one of the main questions that you do need to ask is, do you provide provide direct or indirect or multi carrier type apps? And a multi carrier app means that if I put my information in, I may get matched with 14 companies, and all 14 companies get my information at the same time. So that's exactly why drivers stop answering their phones. Uh, and they get uh, a lot of recruiters that say, man, how did you even get my information? Um, and it's because of those multi-carrier sites. There is a way to use multi-carriers. Um, you know, we call it drip marketing or, or um, continue to, to reach out to those people and send them job alerts. Um, you can actually uh, send out uh, email blasts and things like that to stay connected and let those drivers know that uh, that that you guys have a, a great program there, um, and it's a and, and and again going back to what Kelly said, um, the first 90 days is critical. So if you can create that campaign to stay in in front of those indirect or multi carrier leads over that that course of the 90 days, um, the chances of them coming back and actually filling out a direct app with you is pretty good. Absolutely. And, you know, Matt, what you're talking about here on the drip marketing is directly related to another question here on like, how long should we chase these people. You know, I have a, a Kellyism that nobody comes out of my system until I decide to come out of my system. So you know, if you're trying to hire somebody, well, let's say even on the, on, the, on the database applications of those bulk apps, do like Matt said, stick them into a database, drip market to them, turn them into people calling you saying, hey, I want to go to work for you. Uh, uh, number two, you got somebody you wanted to hire and they disappeared on you. You know, send them that 30-day letter and then put them in your database and just drip market to them. Uh, you know, it doesn't cost you anything really, and it just continues to keep you in front of them um, as time goes on. And then when they do look to make a change, you're going to be the person that they call. Uh, you know, what we're going to have to do is uh, Kent will send us a copy of all these uh, questions that are unanswered, and we will um, uh, and, and we'll answer those questions, get them back, and it will be distributed to you with that. With that, Kent, man, I hate it. We've got lots of great questions here. I wish we could go for another 30 minutes. But with that, I better be quiet and give it to you, sir. Okay, thank you, uh, Kel uh, Kelly and Matt, for certainly a very informative session. You know, the topic that they covered today uh, was su submitted through our surveys from attendees on, you know, interested topics that you would like to hear. So uh, please uh, complete our survey and uh, let us know what more you would like to like for us to present in way of webinar sessions. As Kelly mentioned, there, you know, the questions that have been left unanswered, uh, we'll be addressing those with you via email.
And I would also like to let everyone know that uh, HiRight will be posting at least, yeah, hosting another webinar with Kelly and Amanda Galgos, who is the Director of Risk Management from Stewart Transportation next month on the 9th of November. And the topic will be proactive retention techniques. Uh, so this is another um, suggested topic through our survey. So uh, these certainly these topics are pretty wide reaching and and can and take a lot of uh, a lot of time. And I know Kelly has a whole several day session on these things. So I know we're just kind of hitting the high points, but uh, certainly look for an invitation tomorrow for the um, the webinar that will be coming up next month. And um, we thank you all for attending, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.